What you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock, ready. I call this case the system. It took place up at Lake Sierra. And like so many examples of the confidence game which crossed my desk, this particular one worked because human beings behave like human beings. Now take Don Reardon, for instance. He was at Lake Sierra for the weekend. And here we see human nature. The frank and open admiration of man for a beautiful woman. My name's Don Reardon. I'd like you to dance with me. Well, if you won't, you can at least tell me your name. I'll arrange an introduction. My father warned me never to give my name to strangers. Oh, beauty, personality, and a sense of humor. You've persuaded me. That was the beginning of Mr. Reardon's adventure. The world was perfection. The night was filled with music and the moon shone down on Lake Sierra with a blinding shimmer of loveliness. It's getting awfully late, Don. The later it gets, the more beautiful the moon is. I have to be getting home. Father will be worried. When will I see you again, Nancy? Well, I don't know. I very seldom come down from the house. It's Father. He isn't well. I don't like to leave him. Well, at least let me drive you home. All right. But I'll have to phone. Father usually sends George for me. <laughs> George? Yes, Father's man. I'll only be a minute. Hello? Hello, Father. You having a good time, dear? We've been lucky. Don Reardon is driving me home. Don Reardon, eh? What about him? Does he look like a good prospect? 33 years old. Checked in for the weekend only. $35 a day suite. Partner in a brokerage firm and drives a brand new convertible. Sounds too good to be true. Bring him around and I'll look him over. We're going to leave right away. Make sure George has the guest room ready. They're coming, George. Perhaps we should put some music on the record player. Did you have any special music in mind? Well, let's see. What would you suggest? Tchaikovsky? Tchaikovsky is excellent for the older ones. But a young man. Prokofiev. Put that on. He might like it, and I'd enjoy it thoroughly. And get my props. I must give a very convincing performance tonight. Served a good brandy tonight, George. The young man looks like a gentleman of discernment and taste. Hello, Father. Nancy, dear. Father, this is Don Reardon. Mr. Reardon, this is a pleasure. Happy to meet you, sir. Will you sit down? George, brandy. Yes, sir. And now, Mr. Reardon, perhaps we can have a little talk. You know, my daughter doesn't often bring her friends home. I find that a little hard to believe, sir considering how attractive she is. I should think that uh, she'd have a great many friends. <laughs> I see you have a sense of humor, Mr. Reardon. But I'd like to know a little more about you. Tell me about yourself. Well, sir, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very clever. <laughs> well, I think I'll see how George is doing in the kitchen. Excuse me. Oh, perhaps I'd better be running along. You uh, say you're spending the weekend at the hotel? Well, yes, until Sunday night. Well, Nancy and I are very lonely here. I'm not very well, and she doesn't feel that she can leave me very often. I'd consider it a great honor if you'd consent to be our guest for the weekend. Well, how would Nancy feel about it? The child gives up a great deal to be with me. I like to see her have a good time. And to be perfectly honest, I like young people around. It makes me feel young again. Well, in that case, I'd be happy to accept your invitation, Mr. Metcalf. Good. I'll have George pick up your baggage. 
You'll find the guest room very pleasant. In fact, I was tempted to take it myself. Don Reardon found the weekend with the Metcalfs so pleasant that he returned for the next and for the following weekend. I thought you'd never get here. I didn't think I would either. I finally got things wound up at the office. I'm glad. Do you think you'd be an old maid over the weekend? Well, with father's condition, I've almost become reconciled to spinsterhood. <laughs> would you like that? No woman would. If she thinks she would, the watchmaker left out some of the parts. <laughs> you sure of that? I think so. Why don't you kiss me and I'll know. Well, we'd better get to work, George. It's the little touches that set up the pigeons. I'd say it's about time for a midnight snack. An omelet with chives, whole wheat bread, with plenty of butter, and some of your very best coffee. Right now? Yes, right now. In a moment, Mr. Reardon will realize he's kissing a young lady in full view of her father. You'll be embarrassed to come in. Morning, Dad. Good morning, my dear. Have you had your breakfast? Hours ago. Don and I are going for a swim now. Good. That'll give George and me a chance to go on with yeah. our work. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Metcalf. Did you sleep well? Like a baby. George fixed us a wonderful breakfast. Come on, Nancy. Let's go swimming. Just a moment. You certainly aren't going swimming with your watch on. Oh, thanks. I ran several watches with that stunt. Well, have a good time. George, we almost had a slip-up. The young man was wearing his watch to the beach. Well, if that takes care of all the clocks and watches, you'd better wire me for sound. This could easily lead to frustration, George. Imagine a man of my position constantly going around with a hole in his sock. At the sound of the chimes, the time will be exactly 1.30. And now the results of the first race at Del Mar. The winner was Abigail, Flyaway was second, and Mirror Image was third. Now just what is your line of business, Mr. Metcalf? You've never told me. My line of business? Well, it's not easy to explain. You see, I haven't worked for over 25 years. Oh, retired? Well, yes, you could call it that. Well, you've certainly picked a beautiful place here for your retirement. Well, I can't honestly say it's retirement. Actually, I've made a very comfortable living for the past 25 years, but not by working. <laughs> what have you been doing, Mr. Metcalf? <laughs> robbing banks? <laughs> well, no, not robbing banks, but... I've been doing something some people might think just as bad. <laughs> I've been playing the horses. Are you telling me that you've been making a living betting on horses? That's right, and a very comfortable living. I was under the impression it was practically impossible to make a living from horse racing. Unless you happen to be a horse. Well, I don't blame you for being skeptical, my boy. I'd be disappointed in you if you weren't. Well, I'm skeptical, all right. All the way. In spite of your skepticism, I can only say that I've made a living for 25 years placing bets. Do you mean that uh, you've worked out some sort of um, betting system? Exactly. A system. A system that took years of study to make work, but it works. It works well enough to keep Nancy and me in very comfortable circumstances, as you can see for yourself. No system works. They never do. You only hear the ones that don't work. <laughs> you don't suppose that a man who had a system at work would ever mention it. What time do you have? 127. Suppose we go inside. We should be able to get the results of the first race at Delma in a few minutes. Hmm. 
square plus b square divided by 2 pi r square equals the square root of n. a square plus b square divided by 2 pi r square. At the sound of the times, the chime will be exactly 1.30. And now the results of the first race at Del Mar. The winner was Abigail, Flyaway was second, and Mirror Image was third. Hmm. My system gives me Abigail in the first race, a fleet-footed filly, quoted at eight to one in the morning line. At the sound of the chimes, the time will be exactly 1.30. And now the results of the first race at Del Mar. The winner was Abigail. Flyaway was second, and Mirror Image was third. Well, what do you think of the system now? Well, it works, for one race at least. Hmm. Suppose we try it in the next race. Here, you pick a horse, and we'll let the system pick one. Oh, fine. You mind if I use the hat pin system? <laughs> <laughs> So they played a little game that afternoon. As the results of each race came over George's radio, he piped them into his employer's ear by way of the hearing aid. Thus, Medcalf could take advantage of the half-hour time lag they had set up to pick his winner for the next race. Then, at what seemed to be the correct time, George would rebroadcast the results from his tape through Medcalf's radio. Of course, Medcalf let his system miss a race, just to make it convincing. Mr. Reardon was convinced, all right. Well, this certainly beats a hat pin system. Are you two still talking horses? Well, it's fantastic, unbelievable. Your father picked up and winners out of the last eight races. Father always picks winners. It takes all the fun out of betting on horses. Now you've seen why I gave up working 25 years ago. Well, if you two are through playing, I would like to go swimming. Playing? This isn't a pastime, it's a career. But understand, my boy, I don't always get seven out of eight. I've missed as high as three races on one card. Well, even that's 12 and a half percent to the good. Well, your system's worth millions. No, that's where you're wrong. The system works, it provides a good living, but if I were greedy, that would be the end. What do you mean? I'm always very careful. I never win more than so much from any one bookie. And I never bet at the track because that would pull down the odds on the paramutual machine. And if I were greedy, the bookies would stop taking my bets. And I never tell anyone that I bet by system. Well, one man has to be careful. He couldn't afford to be greedy. But two? Why, well, they double the take. Don, I want to go swimming. Go ahead, my boy. Go swimming with Nancy. We can finish our discussion later. Oh, all right. I'll go change. We got everything ran smoothly. Perfection, George, and I might add that you ran the show in your usual flawless manner. You were good today. I've heard your pitch lots of times. But today, I was tempted to make you an offer the system myself. <laughs> I think the Mutual Admiration Society had better adjourn until our fish is completely landed. He's well hooked, my dear, and I'll have him landed before he leaves for the city. George, be packed and ready to leave on a moment's notice and make reservation in our new territory. Where might that be? Arroyo Beach is nice at this time of year. Good. And you, my dear, see that our fish doesn't wear his expensive watch when he goes in the water. We've got to reset it so he'll know the right time. Later that afternoon at Lake Sierra... Mr. Metcalf, I can understand why you don't want to be greedy with your system, and I can understand why you can't bet too much. But would an opportunity for a large profit without betting at all interest you? I don't think I understand what you mean. I'll give you $5,000 for the use of your system. What? $5,000 for the use of my system? Well, I suppose it's not enough after all. I'll give you ten. Ten thousand dollars $10,000? I'll write you a check for $10,000 right now. Gracious, I don't know quite what to say. Look at it this way, Mr. Metcalf. My winnings wouldn't interfere with you in the least. And this would be an opportunity to make $10,000 clear without risk or work. All right, my boy, the system is yours for $10,000, but with a gentleman's agreement. Well, anything at all. My sole concern is for Nancy. You see, I'm not very well, and 
I may not have much longer. Well, I hope you know how I feel about Nancy. And I know how my daughter feels toward you. In view of that, I think I can speak very freely. I want you to. I'm only thinking of Nancy's welfare. Therefore, you must agree to set aside 10% of your income from bets for her if something should happen to me. I agree. And one other thing. You must agree to keep your bets down. Say, not over $1,000 a race. I agree to that, too. Good. My boy, I'll show you just how the system works and give you the mathematical formula. Sorry, Captain Braddock. And before you say it, I will. I was a fool. I've never been such a fool over a girl in my whole life. <laughs> Let's be realistic about it, shall we, Rudin? The young woman led you into a trap, all right. But what really made a fool out of you was any man's desire to make money. And Metcalf showed you what appeared to be a delightful way of making it. Only the system didn't work. I dropped another 5,000 finding it out. What's worse, I don't know how they tricked me into believing it worked. Well, it's not easy to see if you really wanted to believe it worked. But take my word for it. Metcalf knew the winner of the race before he told you the name. Yes, but we heard the things over the radio. He always picked the winners before the races. According to whose watch, Reardon? We'll go to work on this right away. Well, if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Well, there is something you can do. If you locate them before we do, contact this office immediately. Uh, pretend you haven't tried the system. Anything, just so that you have a chance to call me. Yes, sir. I'll do exactly that. Good. He did locate them before we did, in a pleasant little resort called Arroyo Beach. Goodbye. Nancy ran into Reardon. I'll start packing. Oh, no, 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 no. She says he doesn't know that the system won't work. George, this is manna from heaven. Our little pigeons return for some more plucking. How do we do it? Very simple. We'll use the system again. He'll make bets. You pretend to rush the checks to the bookie, but keep them. With the system and the setup, we'll make sure that he bets on every loser. Okay, so he drops his money. Now he knows the system don't work. Oh, no, no, George. You don't understand human nature and the sucker psychology. With the system, we'll have him bet on the horses that always come in second. Oh, I get it. That way he figures the system's a little off, but still pretty good. That's right. Then later, I'll find a small error in his calculations, which accounts for it. We'll take him for the afternoon. Then you can start packing. It might work, but I don't like it. George, has my ingenuity ever failed us? My boy, what a rude and impolite thing for us to do. Imagine us leaving Lake Sierra without letting you know where we went. Well, that's all right, Mr. Metcalf. I found Nancy again, so everything's fine. Just to say my thoughtlessness is humiliating, I'd like to make it up to you some way. Oh, I wouldn't worry if I were you. Nancy's explained everything. <laughs> Sit down. Tell me, how did the system work for you? Well, it may sound silly, but uh, I've been so busy I haven't tried it. Haven't tried it? My boy, your willpower is amazing. Father, Don just got here. Must you talk about horse racing all the time? Nancy, is anything more important? We found a reliable man here who will take sizable bets. Oh, good. So you'll spend the night with us. We'll try out the system tomorrow, and I'll help you with the figuring myself. Well, that'll be perfect. Uh, what about this bookie? Uh, will he accept my checks? Of course, I'll guarantee them. Oh, what size bet can I make? He'll take up to $1,000 a raise. Oh, fine. Well, this calls for a celebration. George, Brandy. Yes, sir.
the first race, Mr. Metcalf. I'll have it in a moment. Here's a sports bulletin. The first at Del Mar was off at 2.08. The winner, Fancy Dan. Place, Songbird. Make it Songbird. Well, that's who I picked, too. George, put this on Songbird to win. Yes, sir. Now we can relax for a moment. And so it went for five races, until Metcalf figured it was about all his pigeon would hold still for. Here are the results of the fifth at Del Mar. Crimson Bride was first, Sweet Violet second, and Good Grief was... Don, I'm so sorry. Don, my boy, I can't tell you how sorry I am. You've lost a lot of money and it's all my fault. I can't understand what happened with the system. I've lost before one or two races, but never five. Don't worry about it, Mr. Metcalf. The loss wasn't too much. Father, I told you not to tell Don about your system. It only works for you, not for anyone else. The system will work for anyone. We simply had bad luck with this card. But tomorrow's another day. You're right, tomorrow is another day, and it's too bad that you and your assistants will have to spend it and a lot more in a more permanent home. You're under arrest. Thanks. My checks, Captain Braddock. You'll probably need them for evidence. You're right. You really are big time, sure thing, Cyril, alias Mr. Metcalf. You know, I'm almost tempted to change my occupation. You seem to know something about me. We know plenty about you. All of you. Oh, by the way, am I coming in clear? Now, in fact, and you might take this as a compliment, I've been looking forward to meeting you folks for some time. Well, I'm sorry I can't return the compliment, Captain, but tell me, when did we first slip up? Yes, I'm a little curious, too. You know how women are. Well, it wasn't your fault. You played your part well. I might say you're a consummate actress, as Mr. Reardon will agree. You still haven't told well, me... Well, really, it was very simple. When Mr. Reardon discovered he had been taken, he reported to my office. He followed my instructions except for one detail. He didn't phone me immediately after he located you through tracing your call for reservations here. However, last night he developed a slight case of insomnia, strolled to the highway gasoline station, and did get through to me. Sucker psychology, eh? That's right, George, and the pigeon came home to roost. Oh, you better set your watch. Where you're going, we operate on standard time. All right, take him in, Martin. Because Don Reardon reported this matter to this department and cooperated fully with us, we were able to take sure thing Cyril and his two clever operators out of circulation for a while. Now, should you or any member of your family come in contact with this or any swindle, report it immediately. Remember, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See the squad next week, same time, same station.